It's Live in the Bream with host of Fox News at Night, Shannon Bream. Okay, this week on Live in the Bream, it is his Super Bowl, his favorite time of year. And it's lasting for months. In fact, this lasts for years when people run for president. Uh, We are very excited as we are now in week two of the conventions and really in the home stretch, getting ready for the debates to have the politics editor for the Fox News channel, the one and only Christopher Steyerwell. Good to have you, sir. Howdy, ma'am. I, you know, it's funny. I had, I, my joke is always that when you get to campaign season in, in the real deal, uh, I say, you know, it's Easter and I'm the bunny. Uh, I like it. Hopping around, but I, but the Super Bowl maybe is better. And I guess that would make me John Madden and I'm for it. I can, I, I can, I can embrace <laughs> that also. Listen, we need sports. So we're going to use all the sports metaphors we can. That's People right. want some sports in their lives and there's nothing that's more sporting and sometimes pugilistic Then a head-to-head presidential race. We are now there. Um, We're getting through these conventions. Let me first ask you your impressions of the convention so far. As we're talking, we are through with the DNC. We're now on day three of the RNC. Um, What do you make as far as tone, messaging, speakers, what we've seen so far? Well, I think the Democrats had a very successful convention, and they obviously worked hard to reach out to those persuadable suburban voters who uh, helped them so much in 2018. Uh, We heard from uh, former Republicans, current Republicans. We heard about Joe Biden's faith. We heard from Joe Biden, who's a very good spokeswoman for him. All of these things, and the message was pretty clear, was that Joe Biden's no radical and that he is an accessible candidate for those who are concerned about President Trump's leadership. So we didn't know what we were gonna see going into the RNC. So far, can I, one t- can I stop you really quick just yeah. before we leave the DNC? What do you make of, and you talk about the fact that he is, um, they had a, a situation in which they've got to have voices, like their progressive voices, like Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez and others, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders. I mean, he, he's been influential on the platform and what Biden's put together, along with Senator Elizabeth Warren and others. Um, but again, you said the message was to be, he's a moderate guy. He's not a far left guy. But then you have, just within a couple of days, uh, former President Obama saying, listen, when it gets down to it and the goals, uh, it may be different in how they want to get there, but Senator Sanders and Vice President Biden really are not that different. What do you make of that? Well, if you look at what Obama said their goals were, which were like to have good educations for students and have economic growth and to have a just society, those are Donald Trump's goals too. Obama's statement was, the, the Democratic left does not trust Barack Obama, who was, they believe, failed to deliver the transformational change that they wanted. And it's things like that, statements like that, that caused them to mistrust him. Uh, mm-hmm. Because what Obama was saying was like, well, it's just tactics. And I was reminded very much of the split among Republicans when Ted Cruz was leading the shutdown effort. And Mitch McConnell said, well, it's tactics, right? We all Mm -hmm. want the same thing. We all want to defund Obamacare. We're just talking about different tactics. I don't think it will wash for the progressive left that Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders are the same person. But for now, for now, they're willing to be quiet. Democrats fear Donald Trump in a way they did not in 2016. And there is nothing like a healthy dose of fear to Mm -hmm. cause people to behave and these people are ready to be quiet and let Joe Biden have his way. Yeah, I mean, he snuck up on them. He snuck up on a whole lot of people in 2016. He's not sneaking up on them this time. They're not going to not visit states or campaign in states they think are safe. Um, they're, it's a different playbook, and they're on to it this time. Okay, so RNC, your thoughts? Well, Trump's playbook is different, too. It's interesting you put it that way, because Trump's playbook is different. I didn't know what we were going to hear, and I would imagine the Republicans, who only had about a month to put this together, didn't know what was going to be said not too far ago. But the pitch from Republicans has been not what we got used to with a lot of Trump, which was build the wall, crack down on immigration, that the you know talking about the angry mobs and all of the stuff. Those things, culture war stuff, has gotten a lot of attention, but through a different prism, we've heard a united message. Tim Scott's speech is a good example, but, you know, I thought back to it when President Trump got in huge trouble for talking about blank hole countries, and we don't want immigrants from those blank hole countries. And then in the convention, 
he stages a naturalization ceremony for mm -hmm. residents of countries from uh, who, who were not, I think he said he, at the time back then, he said he wanted more immigrants from places like Finland. Uh, and those were, there were no Finns up there. You had uh, Sudan and Ghana and places that we do not associate with the kind of immigration Trump was talking about before. We saw the pardoning uh, of an African-American felon. We mm -hmm. saw uh, a big emphasis on sort of a social justice message. I think that the Republicans are reaching out to the, the same voters. When Joe Biden talks about why he's running for president, he always references Trump's remarks about the white supremacists at Charlottesville and how he was, was sympathetic toward them and that that's what made Biden decide to run. And the Democratic National Convention was devoted in substantial part to point it out, pointing out bigotry and their accusations of racism against Trump. We've heard that rebutted. I, th I think Tim Scott has been the star of the show to this point. He addressed racism and he said it was real. He didn't like pretend that racism wasn't a thing. He just said that the Republican vision, the conservative vision for ameliorating racial differences was better than the Democratic one. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you make of, and we had the Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron who spoke and got a lot of attention as well um, after undergoing some, you know, real race based attacks on him during his uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. spoke. Um, he's being described as a rising star, that kind of thing. But he and Tim Scott and others have been getting this question about whether Republicans are using them as tokens, you know, emphasizing people of color, men and women that they can find to come support the party. It's been an interesting attack to watch from the left. And it seems to only amplify the accusation back at them that if people that they think should think a certain way don't think a certain way, then their thoughts aren't valid. Well, Dem Democrats are going to say that, that this is fake and that Republicans aren't interested uh, mm -hmm. in addressing racial problems and that they're only saying this for the convention. And then just as Republicans said, well, Democrats aren't really moderate. They're only putting forward John Kasich and Mike Bloomberg as tokens, but in reality, they're lunatic socialists. So we would remember that when it comes to partisan assessments of themselves and each other, it's going to be, as Joe Biden would say, full of malarkey. Um, but we, we love care, conventions. But, but we care about these conventions because this is the message that these parties want to send to the country. They're, they say, this is who we are. These are the big billboards that they put along the highway to say this is who they are. And what Democrats wanted to say is, we are a moderate party and inclusive of those people who might not agree with us all the time, but are concerned about Donald Trump's leadership. And from Republicans, we heard, this is an inclusive party. This is a party that's concerned about racial justice. And this is a party that has a place for all kinds of people in it. And I think both have made the argument pretty effectively. How do you think that the riots, the protests, the unrest that we're seeing in the streets will or won't factor into voters' decisions going into the fall? It's a tricky one because it cuts both ways. On the one hand, Republicans feel confident that chaos means uh, white voters in the suburbs will be alarmed and, uh, and, and come back to the Republican Party. On the other hand, a couple of things are true. Number one, when we think about 1968 and how Richard Nixon won in 1968, Richard Nixon won in 1968 because he was not the incumbent and he was promising to calm things down and that he was promising that this, because remember, there were three candidates running in 1968. You had George Wallace, uh, the segregationist from uh, Alabama, uh, Hubert Humphrey, the sitting vice president, and you had Nixon. And Nixon was saying, I can come in from the outside and calm things down. So Biden, who scores much better on questions of race relation than Trump, has a different pitch, which is Trump is making things worse, I'll make them better. I think it cuts both ways. I think it is true that the Black Lives Matter movement uh, risks delegitimization by uh, outside violent actors. But as we're seeing in Wisconsin now, you have outside actors uh, on the other side, too. So mm -hmm. I, don't think it's a, I don't think it's a clear line. I think this one cuts both ways. We'll have more Live in the Bream in a moment. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, the fact that we are now inching towards conversations, getting more detailed about Senate and House races in seats as well. Because um, while, of course, there's rightfully a ton of uh, attention on the presidential race, much of what the president is able or not able to get done has to do with those two houses of Congress. And especially when you think of the Senate, how the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has been 
jamming through the federal judges, making conservatives very happy. That comes to a grinding halt, even if... um For the full podcast, go to foxnewspodcast.com.